Welcome to a Legendarium special about Giovanni Aldani, the man who probably inspired the story of Frankenstein. In this special, we will talk about an Italian scientist who claimed he could bring a dead man back to life. Giovanni Aldani was born in the Italian city of Bologna during the year 1762 to an esteemed family. As a child, Giovanni Aldani watched his uncle, Dr. Luigi Galvani, perform experiments. For more than 10 years, Dr. Luigi Galvani studied the legs of dead frogs and how they connected to the central nervous system. He realized that if stimulated with an electric current, the leg muscles of dead frogs twitched. Furthermore, Dr. Galvani believed that if he stimulated the fluid that connected the nerves to the entire body, he could reverse the effects of death. After watching his uncle perform these macabre experiments, Giovanni Aldani entered the same field. After studying at the University of Bologna, he graduated in 1782. As a young man, he assisted in his uncle's experiments reanimating dead frogs. By poking a dead frog simultaneously with two rods of different metals, they made its muscles twitch. This seemingly proved Galvani's theory about animal-generated electricity now known to be false. However, upon his uncle's death, Aldani began to crave something more exciting. He began performing the same experiments his uncle did on frogs, but on larger animals with more sophisticated nervous systems. He did so in part because his beloved uncle Luigi had an arch-rival named Alessandro Volta, who insisted that animal electricity could not possibly exist. Volta insisted, correctly, that... Differing metals generated electricity, not living matter. Yet for a time, Aldani appeared to prove his uncle right. Aldani, more of a showman than his shy and retiring uncle, drew crowds to his laboratory as he attempted to reanimate dead sheep, pigs, cows, and oxen. For the most part, Giovanni Aldani proved successful applying electrical impulses to the corpses using a battery. The animals' heads shook from side to side, their eyeballs rolled, and their tongues lolled out of their mouths while being electrocuted. Before long, attending one of these gruesome performances became a popular fad among Europe's educated elite. In part because of his success, Aldani became professor of experimental physics at the University of Bologna in 1798. Of course, Aldani alone did not carry out such experiments. In Germany, Karl August Weinhold scooped out a cat's brain, removed its spine, and filled the resulting cavities with silver and zinc. He reported that the two metals caused the dead animal to regain its pulse and live again, though very briefly. However, Aldani felt he achieved all he could with the bodies of dead animals and set out to reanimate a human corpse. In 19th century Italy, procuring a recently dead body proved surprisingly easy. Aldani simply traveled to Piazza Maggiore and waited for the executioner to do his job. However, Aldani soon realized that the beheaded bodies drained of blood, and without blood in the veins, the electrical impulses had nothing to travel through. His battery proved useless against a headless corpse. Yet while Italy executed their criminals by beheading, England still used the gallows. So Aldini traveled to London and ordered one freshly hanged criminal to be delivered to the Royal College of Surgeons in Italy. He received the corpse of George Foster, a man who lived a life of relative anonymity on London streets, yet became one of the kingdom's most talked about dead men. In front of a large crowd, Aldini generated an electric current with a voltaic the forerunner of a modern battery. Developed by Volta and based on Galvani's own observations and notes, the pile included a set of alternating zinc and silver plates separated by pieces of paper soaked in salt water or sulfuric acid. 
Aldini left the probe connected for hours, and through it all, the crowd watched with bated breath as Foster's jaw quivered, his facial muscles contorted, and his left eye opened. At one point, the corpse even appeared to inhale. In time, Aldani's battery died, and Foster did the same soon after, this time for good. Though Aldani considered his experiment a failure, as Foster ultimately failed to return to life, the doctors who witnessed his performance considered it a miracle. News quickly spread of Aldani's feet, how he opened an eye and Foster maybe even breathed. As with every story, the tale grew with each telling. By the time it reached the ears of Mary Shelley, the daughter of an English friend of Aldini's, the tale included Foster's arms lifting and his head spinning around 360 degrees. Mary Shelley later drew inspiration from the tale she heard as a child when she began writing. Her titular character, Victor Frankenstein, bears a striking resemblance to Giovanni Aldani in his intentions and methods. Of course, it remains unknown what George Foster would have done to his creator if Aldani's battery held out a little longer. After the Foster experiment, Aldini began treating patients with personality disorders using electrocution. He reported complete rehabilitation following transcranial administration of electricity. Aldini's work laid the groundwork for various forms of electrotherapy used throughout the 19th century. Even today, deep brain stimulation, a procedure used to relieve patients with motor or behavior disorders, owes much to Aldani and Galvanism, the brainchild of his uncle Luigi Galvani. In recognition of his merits, Aldini became a Knight of the Iron Crown and a state councillor at Milan, where he died in 1834. And unlike Frankenstein's monster, Aldini remained in the grave. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.